Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and uh, today I'm returning to Ultimate General Civil War. Who would have guessed? Uh, it's only been the focus of my channel for the last two or three plus months. Uh, today I'm going to be starting a brand new campaign. I know I recently just finished a Union campaign, which I played all the way through. It was 50 plus episodes. I'm not quite sure if the frequency of this particular campaign is going to be an everyday kind of thing on the channel or if it's going to be every once in a while. But I did want to play through as the Confederacy because I've heard that the Confederate campaign is much more difficult. I played through it when it was still in early access and was only able to get through, I think it was Shiloh before getting fired. It seemed much more difficult at the time. I know the game has had a lot of changes and modifications since that period of time, so I figured I would go ahead and uh, run a Confederate campaign and see how it went. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start the campaign here. This is our first episode, uh, and we are going to go ahead and hit next, uh, the beginning. Um, we're going to go ahead and pick our... Hmm, what should our specialty be? Should it be a tactician, a strategist, or a logistic? Or lo logistic? Oh my god, I can't speak tonight. Um, I think... Let's see. Do I care about army organization, logistics, training, army organization? Well, really, the only benefit of tactician is recon. It's either recon, training, or logistics, because they all get one army org. I think I'm going to go with uh, the logistician or something. All right. So we're going to go with that, and then we're going to go ahead with artillery, I think. I've always done infantry, which gives you a big training boost, which makes it cheaper to train uh, veteran replacements. But I'm not sure if I'm going to go quite as hard on the veteran replacements as I did last time around with the Union. Um, I think I'm going to go maybe more down the artillery route. Reconnaissance doesn't seem to be that valuable to me. Um, it gives you a few perks or whatnot, but I think more ammunition and more uh, troops recovering from their casualties would be a better benefit. And medicine allows troops to, basically you lose casualties, but you get a percentage of them back, kind of as walking wounded that come back to you. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do medicine and uh, logistics, which is the artillery. Um, and then it's going to ask what our further career was. So after we got out of the army, or did we stay in the army, or did we do other things? Did we go into business? Did we go into politics? Um, I think in this case, we're going to go with politics, probably, because I think the extra manpower is going to be really important fighting for the Confederacy uh, and the slightly cheaper weapons. We could focus on cheaper weapons with business, but playing as the Confederates, ideally, you're going to be capturing a lot of your weapons from the Union as you mow down the Union hordes. So weapons should be, at least early on, a little bit of a secondary concern. Um, I really think that politics and economy are going to be the main pieces. Army organization could be nice, uh, but again, if I'm not really focusing on the training piece, if I'm focusing on uh, maintaining the forces that I have, I think politics and economy uh, are an ideal uh, pick here. So I'm going to go with politics. And as I've already said, I'm going to go ahead and fight as the Confederacy. Uh, so we are trying to break away from the Union, hence my title, It's Treason Then. Yes, Star Wars reference. Uh, but it is going to be uh, us uh, trying to break away from the United States of America to form our own country. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to play on medium difficulty. I did that for the Union campaign, but I've talked to multiple people, and everybody is saying that the Brigadier General difficulty is much more difficult as the Confederacy than it is as the Union. And I'd hate to jump into Major General and lose right away. I don't want to win easily, but I also don't want to die five or six missions in. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go with Brigadier General. Okay, so now we've got to go ahead and enter our name. Um... Let's see here. What should it be? I can't do it. We'll go with TH Butcher. Hopefully I'm not butchering my forces quite as much as I did before. Uh, but we'll just kind of go with go with that as kind of the nickname from our previous fight through or playthrough. You'll see here our politics start at 3, our economy at 1, our medicine at 2. Uh, and then our logistics starts at 3 as well, army org at 1. Um, Alright, so we're going to go ahead and begin... Sorry, guys, I'm not going to name myself Longstreet because I'm probably too aggressive uh, to be named after Longstreet. Salius, I think that would be interesting. A Napoleonic game uh, with this model, uh, I think, would fit 
reasonably well. I think the difficulty in building your army in a Napoleonic game is the weapons didn't change or, you know, you didn't see the same sort of rapid adoption of technology during the Napoleonic Wars as you did during uh, the American Civil War. So it would make kind of the organization part of the game a little bit maybe less appealing. All right, so General, your first assignment is to secure a small coastal fort at the bank of the Potomac River. Um, your vanguard must hurry up, and elements of the Union batteries uh, eliminate the Union batteries while the fort is lightly guarded. The Federals have been alerted and gather forces to block the river passage in front of you. Okay, I've played. I think I've played this battle once, so we know we've got... Enemy troops uh, coming up, so we're going to go ahead and pause. Uh, our assault troops are moving up. We've got some cavalry here, so we're going to go ahead and send them. We're going to send the cavalry down the, the road here toward the right. Uh, maybe they can get up toward the fort relatively quickly. We'll see what they can spot. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and send these skirmishers out ahead uh, to see what they detect. Uh, we'll go ahead and send these infantry, Siegfried's troops, up this road. They'll have better marching time up this road. Uh, and we'll kind of split these guys up, form them up, and ready for the assault. And T.H. Butcher will uh, follow up as well. I think that's all we start with here. Just a few units here. Uh, cavalry flanking out to the right. Infantry going up the middle with a little bit of skirmishers out ahead of us. Okay, so you can see here our troops are marching. General Butcher is moving forward. Our cavalry is moving through this little town. Uh, General Butcher probably shouldn't get out ahead of the skirmishers. Yeah, don't do that. All right, so we've spotted some enemy skirmishers here. Oh, boy. What do our cavalry have? They've got a lot. Okay, so these are going to be good melee troops. We'll try and charge these enemy militia down here a bit. Um... So hopefully we can break the, uh, the uh, skirmishers here on the right. And on the left, uh, maybe we can just use our regular infantry here to drive them off. Going to keep Kemper's brigade moving forward here. To kind of keep the momentum going. Alright, so Arkav is not doing so well. They're engaged in melee, and they're losing a lot more than they're killing, which is weird. I would have thought troops with palmettos would have been better at uh, killing the enemy. But you can see there the cavalry is being driven off. Alright. You don't need to run. They're retreating, so you're going to move up here. Kemper, you're going to move up to try and maybe catch them in march. We'll send the skirmishers up that way. So the cavalry did not drive back the enemy skirmishers here on the right flank. That was a failure. We'll move these guys over to the right now. I don't think they have the power to overwhelm the troops that are blocking their path, which will make taking that fort a little bit more difficult. Keep the skirmishers keeping the pressure up. Kemper, you'll go ahead and stop running, and you'll just kind of engage these skirmishers. And Siegfried, you'll keep moving up. Oh god, he's flanked. Okay, TH Butcher move this way. We'll get the cavalry around here. Maybe they can support versus these engaged skirmishers. Alright. RG, I don't think I should try a southern accent. I am not <laughs> I am not known for my ability to pull off an accent. Uh, maybe at some point later. Uh, but uh, maybe not right at this moment. All right, come on, guys. Let's get these guys out of the fucking way. All right, so we're driving them back. Keep up the pressure, boys. All right, they're still in good shape. Oh, nice. Those skirmishers are almost dead. Oh, more reinforcements coming up. Bernie's Brigade, Canfield's Brigade, Allen's Brigade. Oh, with some supplies. I'm waiting for my artillery. I haven't, I haven't seen any artillery yet. It's a little bit frustrating. 
think we'd have some showing up here. Okay, we've spotted some enemy infantry here, moving up to try and get to the fort. I'm going to try and get Kemper up there to engage them before they get there. Cavalry has spotted them. Alright, come on. Get them to engage you. Let's go. We're trying to run for the fort, which has some unfilled uh, positions here. Oh, what are you doing? Alright, so Kemper's Brigade is delaying the enemy as our reinforcements come up. Supplies. Rocker, I don't want you to retreat too much. Ah, oh, shit. There's already a brigade here. Well, this is dumb. Fire a volley and destroy those guys. God, they didn't die yet. Alright, you're gonna have to fall back. Alright, so they got a few troops in in the fort here. Sent our cavalry forward here. They're, I don't want them to get wiped out here, but at least it gives Kemper some free volleys. What is he using? Some smooth bores? Yeah. Okay, so we just routed the thir the Ohio Regiment. And the enemy units got in the fort, or at least some of them did. Damn. You can probably still outflank them, maybe. Move around this way, toward the east side of the fort. Oh, there goes our cavalry unit, destroyed. Alright. So Bernie's gonna try and flank the fort here this way. Kemper's gonna do the same. Siegfried will stay kind of out front as a as a bit of a diversion. And then Alan and Canfield will come up and reserve. Ah, shit. Let me move over here, guys. Man, these Yankees seem to have a lot better weapons than us. Camera wasn't bad, it just wasn't great for, like, frontal assaults in the way that it was during the Napoleonic Wars. Civil War cavalry was definitely very important and very useful, just in a different way than I think generals had used it in European conflicts. Okay... Alright, Miles is being driven back. The Butcher's getting artillery shot at him. Canfield will engage the 2nd Ohio. It looks like Miles' brigade's probably going to try and take up positions in the fort, I would imagine. These guys are in no shape to charge, though. They're all too exhausted. Alan, you're in good shape, though. You can flank. 
Alright, so we've got two and a half hours to take the fort and destroy these batteries. We're gonna move these troops up into the fort. Move Alan around. Kind of expect them to do a little bit better than that. There goes those skirmishers we just drove out. Supplies surrendered. Good. I got my supply wagon captured. That's awesome. Ugh. I always do this kind of stupid shit. I don't pay attention. It won't matter for this battle, but we're going to have to build up our supply stack. Guessing there's enemy troops around there. If not, I'll just charge them back. And... All right. Okay, the fort is slowly changing hands. Gotta destroy that goddamn battery. Ah, canister. Destroy the damn. There we go. All right, that battery is destroyed. Now we gotta destroy battery A, which may run away before we can actually do that. charge these guys. Maybe our skirmishers won't get destroyed. Just maybe. But we've got to destroy... That's the, the frustrating thing here. Is it's like, well, we drove the battery back, but according to the game, that's not good enough. We've got to destroy it. Stay there, battery. Are we driving them back? I can't tell who's retreating. I'd like my supplies back, sir. Alright. Supplies surrendered back to us. Nice. We got our supplies back. We got them back. And we destroyed that federal skirmisher group. We'll just get our troops up here. I think there's going to be some Union Ironclads that are going to show up, I think, if my memory serves me right, and some additional Union reinforcements that we're going to have to hold off. All right. Cavalry can be effective. I mean, they can overrun skirmishers, too. I know you guys aren't terribly high on them, but they can be very useful. You just have to be careful on how you employ them. Alright, Siegfried's gonna get in there. The Ohio Regiment's routed. Battery A's still not destroyed. Alright, Alan, your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to charge out of the fort and go destroy Battery A. Thanks, New. You haven't seen me taking a fort before? Yay, we secured the fort, but I think there's another thing coming, right? Yeah, okay. Union ironclads are coming, Union reinforcements are coming. All fear the Union that's coming. Okay, so I guess we don't have to destroy the fort anymore? Did we just lose a brigade because it wasn't in the fort? All right, you can see here federal ironclads are bombarding our fort and our batteries. Our batteries are going to shoot back at them and hopefully destroy them. We just have to hold the fort. That's the main objective here. I don't have any other artillery other than these two batteries here. So I'm just going to have them isolate and focus. Hey, why are you shooting at that other guy? You should both be shooting at the USS 
Is it the Anacosta? Alright, so we're going to go ahead and fast forward. As the artillery duel occurs, you can see here the, air, the Anacosta or whatever it is is getting weaker. Its strength is rapidly decreasing. Federal troops are coming up. Do we lose everything in this battle that isn't in the fort? Because we had supplies too. Oh, really? They killed our artillery commander of that battery? Alright. Come on. Anacosta's almost dead. Hit back. There you go. A couple of more shots and I think they pull out. Federals are massing for their Helm's Deep charge. Alright. No, keep shooting at these guys. Don't shoot at the infantry. That artillery will kill us. Oh. Didn't I already have Alan up? Oh. Don't run, everybody. All right. Yankees are charging. There we go. All right. So that enemy unit sunk. We'll let these guys shoot here. They are charging our uh, dug-in troops. Let's do this. Let's pull them out of the fort here in the southern end where there's no threat. And let's go ahead and run them to the other side of the fort. So they can provide some fire support behind the line. Bring our reserves up. That flank isn't threatened yet. So we'll bring our reserves up down this river road. The river road! On our supplies, which again, these all seem to be troops we already used, but for some reason, we just kind of had them march away and come back, I guess. Alright, Merit, fire at that enemy, tr enemy ironclad. charge again. Emperor's probably going to die. I would guess. Right. Oh shit. Oh shit. Things are happening too fast. On the double boys. They've broken our line. God damn it. They flanked us. All right, just move on to their flank. Fire. You're going to go up this way. I really don't like the idea of Kemper. He's only got 100 men. He's going to quickly die, I would imagine. Yep, his brigade just died. And these are the units that we start with, too. That's the other important thing to remember, is the way this game works is whatever survives is kind of your initial starting force. So we've already lost a few units. Which isn't great. Oh, stay back. Back in the fort. Go ahead and chase him, Terry. Allen's got your flank. Okay, we've got to hold for another hour and 40 minutes. Alright. Thanks, Dip. Stop shooting at the infantry. Take out that goddamn ironclad. 
I assume it's an ironclad. If we zoom in, it looks like it's got iron on the sides. A steam wheel ironclad, though. Not no turrets. Okay. Thanks, Philippe. Always good to hear people who enjoy the stuff from all around the world. I know the other day we had people from New Zealand, Australia, Brazil, and I know you're from Brazil, so thanks again for watching, as always. I think these guys would have a little bit better aim. Looks like they're focusing on Bernie here, but Grant wasn't able to... Wasn't able to overrun us. Argentina as well. Southern Hemisphere well represented tonight. Alright, come on Butcher, get over there. Martin, we just started the Confederate campaign. This is our first fight, so no, you are not late. The name of the ship is the USS Thomas Freeborn. You can see here I've got one brigade providing support fire kind of on the flank. We've got two brigades in the entrenchments and one kind of not really engaged on the southern entrenchments. I'm going to move uh, Siegfried's boys over. They've had a chance to recover some of their morale. They can provide some supporting fire from behind the lines of the Duggan troops as well as some quick reserves who can come in if Barney or... Canfield or anyone else gets pushed back, they can come up quick and replace them in, in line. Right, we're going to move Alan Ford here. I want to finish off battles, uh, skirmishers here, hopefully, uh, with one more volley. I'm hoping they disappear. They've only got about 90 men left. Looks like only a handful of casualties inflicted by that volley. Alan's not really providing any flank fire anymore so much as he's... Um, Providing just kind of a frontal engagement with Terry's brigade and battles skirmishers. He's probably better off not shooting at those skirmishers, actually. He should be shooting at Terry's brigade. Skirmishers are harder to harder to hit. Good to know, Bully. The USS Thomas Friedman was a steam tug acquired by the Union Navy during the American Civil War. It was used by the Navy as a gunboat to patrol navigable waterways of the Confederacy to prevent the South from trading with other countries. And it is almost sunk. One more volley should do her in, and there she goes. Alright, so Merritt and Pebble can... Target Brook, and we can start bringing these guns to bear against the enemy infantry here. Is Alan really a three-star general? I sure hope not. He's, if he is, he's dramatically overqualified. All right, go ahead and fast forward here a bit. It says we got about an hour left that we've got to hold the fort. All of my guys are taking pretty heavy casualties. Yeah, they're using high grass as cover. Still inflicting reasonable losses on them. I haven't really paid enough attention to see if they're inflicting more on us than, than we on them. Okay, we'll give some artillery support. We'll have Siegfried come up and join and support a little bit. Whoa! Don't get flanked there. Alright, skirmishers are done for. Now it's just a straight up infantry fight. And yes, we're definitely losing worse than we're getting. They're going to go ahead and fall back. Just because, again, if these units get totally destroyed, it does impact our ability to... Uh, we retain whatever survives, I believe. So I'd rather they not get destroyed. We'll go ahead and put Alan's guys in these entrenchments. We've already had a couple of units destroyed, which means we'll have a weaker starting force. Yeah, the Confederates had a different ranking system, didn't they? The three stars being a colonel, the two stars being something else. Uh, this is not Sumter Bully, uh, given the Union is the ones attacking and the Confederates are the ones defending. This is just sort of the intro scenario for the Confederates. It's the... 
Um, just like a battle, I think they call it Potomac Fort, which is loosely based off of, oh my goodness, I can't remember the name of the landing, kind of at the, at the entryway to the ocean that the Union fought against the Confederacy at. Sumter was also an island. We've got a little bit of a moat here. It's almost an island. All right, so... Kind of waiting for this thing to be over. Three more minutes. I'm assuming it will be over in three minutes. The Union battle is a little bit more exciting for the first battle, I think. There you go, finish. So, victory for the Confederates. Uh, we had 3,200 men, they had 5,600. They lost about 3,000. We lost about half, a little bit less, more than half of that. Lost a few guns, lost 172 cavalry. Uh, we had a few units routed off the field. We did see, well, we rescued some of our own palmettos. We also seized some 500 1842s and a few 1855 rifles. Those will come in handy. Uh, we also seized a couple of six pound field pieces as well as rescuing six pound field pieces. I guess the guns in the forts were only six pounders. Everything was successful in the first battle, May 22nd, 1861, is a Confederate victory. And no, this is not Sumter, bully. This is the Battle of the Potomac Fort. Uh, Sumter was in South Carolina. This is in Virginia. Okay. So moving forward, we get the Confederate, or sorry, the Civil War Campaign Medal, and uh, 3,000 troops, $47,000, and apparently just one of those units, uh, Siegfried's Brigade, we get to keep. Right. Um, career, uh, we've got one career point we can go ahead and award. Uh, politics gives us more manpower and money, which I think are going to be the biggest things for us. So we're going to go ahead and focus on that, at least initially. So we'll go ahead and assign one, our, our one piece there. Um, what about our troops here? What are they equipped with? 1842s uh, with 3,000 troops in reserve. So we're going to go ahead and build out this brigade to 1,000 men. Uh, it's green enough that I really don't see the need to do anything but rookie for the uh, for the replacements. We're using some of the captured 1842 Springfields, so we're gonna go ahead and assign 700 of our manpower there. We're gonna go ahead and form a new brigade, a new infantry brigade uh, with a thousand men. We're gonna go ahead and use the 1842s. We're not gonna use farmers, those are terrible weapons. We're gonna go ahead and equip these with Springfield 1842s. I don't know if a major, can a major command that size of a unit without a penalty? Looks like it. All right, well, I guess we can go with a major then, commanding a thousand men, which Seems like too many men for a major to command, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, I think a thousand men will be our kind of standard brigade size early in this war. So we'll go ahead and assign those troops. Uh, we've also got a battery here of six pound field guns. The officer was wounded. We have one more major in reserve, but we're going to go ahead and assign. I think a captain would probably be okay. And he's got one trait we can use, which we're going to go ahead and get ammo and efficiency for him. And we've got three guns in the armory. So we're actually, oh, we're gonna lose that trait unless we do veterans, which is only 6,000, so that's reasonable. We're actually gonna go ahead and get eight guns. We're gonna increase the size of the battery to eight guns. So it's a little bit more potent than it was before. And darn, we can't raise a third brigade because I didn't go with army organization. So it looks like three brigades in a division is the maximum for us. So. In that case, we're just going to go ahead and max these guys out at 1,500 men. Use the majority of our reinforcements or our manpower here to equip these two men. These are going to be two decent-sized brigades, I think, or two decent striking power brigades at 1,500 men. We've got about 162 manpower left. Uh, we have a little bit of money left as well. Uh, we can make that a 10-gun battery, I think, and we'll just kind of keep the extra 119 uh, left over. All right, so there you have. Uh, it wasn't Harper's Ferry. There's a, uh, what was it, like Anaconda Landing or something like that. There was a small little engagement which occurred in northern Virginia. It wasn't Fort Monroe. It wasn't Harper's Ferry. Um, it was, again, it was like uh, Anacosta, Anaconda. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a small little fort uh, engagement that this was based on. Um... Let's see here. So we've got 10 guns and 3,000 infantry in this division here. Division is commanded by Tom Preston. He's a colonel. And, uh, yeah, so this is this is what we've got. We should probably spend some money on supplies. So we'll go ahead and spend 
the money that we still have on supplies to start building that. Um, I think I need some extra ships to blockade some of the Union blockade. Well, we don't have to worry about ships in this game. Uh, that was just kind of one of the very few scenarios where we actually fight with ships. Uh, so the Grand Battle of Bull Run will be followed, will be coming shortly. The Battle of Newport News is the first minor engagement, and then the Battle of Bull Run is the first major engagement. But we can go in and we can fight the Battle of Newport News now. Uh, we gain four reputation with a victory as well, $60,000 and 4,300 manpower. I intend to win the battle. Uh, we've got more manpower reserves that will come online than we can possibly lose, so that's a positive um, and additionally, some extra money, which we can always use more of. Um, let's see here. The armory, we've got some Springfields. I could sell those for more money, but frankly, I don't see the point. I, I'm just going to keep those for now, because it would be nice to get some rifles. Uh, our cavalry were all killed. You know what I should have done is I should have raised a cavalry brigade. But I didn't. Uh, maybe next turn. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. We've got one... one officer here in reserve uh and uh i think we're about ready for our next fight here all right guys that's gonna do it for episode one of a brand new live stream series live stream based series of ultimate general civil war fighting as the confederacy so we win the opening battle uh, and we've begun constructing our force and moving onwards into the bull run campaign i hope you enjoyed part one of this new series and please join me again tomorrow for part two as we begin fighting the lead up battles to the battle of bull run all right guys and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you for watching, and I'm out.